This is destroying the lives of millions of men and women, including children, around the world. And we need to recognize and do something about it. We need to recognize that we are living in a pornographic culture. It's real. Um, we live in a pornographic culture. And that's one of the things that makes it very difficult to deal with pornography. We've been so inundated with pornography that we're desensitized to pornography. And, and that line um, at which we will say that's pornographic um, has been drawn so far out into the realm of the inappropriate that we have people who dress pornographically um, and they're not bothered by it and we're not bothered by it. And pornography is a multi-billion dollar industry that generates more money than the NFL, MLB, and NBA combined. Although it is destructive to millions and wrecking families and is the cause of so many heartbreaks, divorce, and depression, the amount of people that access this ever-growing, addictive, and damaging dark hole is staggering. I read an article this week produced by Michigan State University Department of Science and they came out with the fact that there are currently on the internet four million pornographic websites. Four million being trafficked on a daily basis by 80 million people. More people are tuned into those websites than everybody on Netflix, Twitter, and Amazon combined. What are they looking for? Well, if you ask them, they would be looking for some kind of gratification, some kind of some kind of love, some kind of meaningful relationship. It's a fool's paradise. They're like Ponce de Leon trying to find the fountain of youth. It's not there. This industry also generates more income than the combined revenues of ABC, NBC, and CBS. It is estimated between 15 billion and 97 billion a year. Every second, more than $3,000 is being spent on pornography by men and women across the globe. That's about $11 million an hour and more than $265 million a day. Think about that for a minute. It is evident that the darkness of this world is deep. It is a profound darkness. It is an ever-increasing darkness. It is a spiritual black hole engulfing the world and into which the world plunges deeper and deeper all the time. The Bible tells us why our culture is so pornographic and overly sexualized in Romans chapter 1 verses 18 through 32. It is because God has given us over to our sexual desires which are rooted ultimately in idolatry. We desire created things to satisfy us instead of God. We bow down to four-footed animals to give us comfort. We run to images and idols created by the creature to take our pain away, mend our broken hearts. In the end result, is devastating. They give themselves to a person for a little while, they give themselves to a certain behavior for a little while, and it comes up dry, it comes up empty, and, and they're more deeply wounded than they were before they ex experienced that, and it just adds another scar to them and makes them a step more jaded toward the reality of ever finding true love. We grow in our love for sin and develop an affinity to sexual lust and desires. And we repeat the same cycle over and over again because our mind and reasoning have become darkened. And this in every sphere in our society and almost at every age group, starting with children at the age of 11 to adults at the age of 70 and beyond. A recent survey found that 50% of Christian men and 20% of Christian women are addicted to porn. That means that in a church with 100 adults, 25 men and 10 women are struggling with that sin. In these numbers are growing every single day. Listen very carefully how this minister wrecked his spiritual and ministerial life due to sexual lust. Where, sure. where did it go? Where yeah, did it I take would, you? Would. So far from who you actually were, where did it take you? Sure. Yeah, the double life looked like this. On the outside, I was this minister and squeaky clean uh, pastor by day. And pre-internet, I would go to adult bookstores and video arcades where one would access pornography and hope to encounter uh, physical relationships. I would go to bars and I would drink excessively and abuse alcohol. I would go to strip clubs and massage parlors and then ultimately it took me to uh, both high-priced escort services and uh, the alleys and back roads seeking prostitutes. And one of the things um, about the addiction was I became more and more deceptive. Uh, I would take very, very long lunch hours and I would try to uh, be deceptive as to where I was and um, I would have to drink on my lunch hour as a way of dealing with the shame and the anxiety and I really really became very out of control. Even successful TV stars are not spared from this. For example, actor Terry Crews wrecked his life in marriage for a period of time. Listen to his testimony. 
What was wild is that I was Christian man, married for a long time, churchgoer, everything looked great. You know, everything on the outside looked fantastic. Hey, how are you doing, brother? Wonderful. But inside, I had a total addiction to pornography. Mm. And it was one of those things where, you know, you almost feel like you say, it's kind of like with people with alcohol or anything, they say, oh yeah, I can quit any time. You feel like, well, I, I can just quit that. But when you want, when you don't want to do it, yeah. and you do it anyway, yeah. it's like, what is happening? Mm. What is going on? And slowly but surely, I was losing my grip on everything. It started to color the way I saw everybody in my life. Mm. And she, and, and, and this is the thing, I, and this I thoroughly believe this. And one thing that feeds pornography is your beliefs. Mm. And I, being the car carrying, football playing, masculine super guy, I believed I was more valuable than my wife and kids. That is the reason why the Bible is unequivocally clear about sexual sin. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6 verses 18 through 20, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It is not normal for someone to be completely naked on camera for millions around the world to view. It is abnormal for a woman to be in the most vulnerable state that she could be and to perform indecent acts that will live on the internet for perpetuity. This is demonic. Satan is behind all of this. And as children of God, we cannot and must not partake in the unfruitful deeds of the kingdom of darkness. The point is this, whatever God designs perfectly, Satan will counterfeit. And that's the deception. If the love that God grants us is uh, self-sacrificing and unconditional and relentlessly forgiving, the love that Satan offers will be a perversion of that. It will be self-centered, self-indulgence, conditional and uh, unforgiving. When the world talks about love, it usually really simply means self-love. I need you to fulfill my desire for my satisfaction. Physical desire, personal passion is by nature selfish. People love for what somebody provides for them, gives to them, does for them. That's the satanic option. In Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 8, we're told, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, a sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Christian men and women, this is the time for you to wake up from your slumber. The kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus Christ is coming soon. What happens if Christ returns and you are right in the act? What happens if the trumpet sounds from heaven and you are viewing something that you weren't supposed to? Where do you think you'll spend eternity? We are so blinded by our lust and sin that we can't even make sense of what is right or wrong, what is godly or satanic. Many people think that they are young and this is just a phase or they are single and when they are married this would probably go away. And that, my friend, is a lie from the pit of hell. That is the voice of the serpent talking to you, my friend. It hisses very gently. Look, but do not touch. Touch, but do not taste. Taste, but do not chew. Chew, but do not consume. And before you know it, it is too late for your soul. Those are the guiles of Satan, the serpent of old. And they are always the same. Cunning, deceptive, and destructive. And if you are not living according to the Spirit of God, and if you are not walking in a manner worthy of the call with which you have been called, then you will fall for Satan's 
deception and the consequences are dire. That is the reason why the Apostle James says in James chapter 1, each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it has won its course, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers and sisters. It is sad to say, but millions have fallen prey and continue to fall prey to sexual lust. And some are helpless and hopeless. They have no idea how to deal with it. They have no peace and it certainly brings them no joy and yet they go back to it every single day. And week in and week out, they are destroying their lives. That is a tragic illustration of someone who is bound and chained to their sin. How do we deal with it and what do we do about it? Part of dealing with the roots of pornography are acknowledging the fact that we have been desensitized to it and acknowledging the fact that my problem with pornography, let's say that there's a pornography scale of, of, of one to 10 and 10 is, you know, full on, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm engaging in, you know, the, the, the worst um, e examples and extremes of pornography. Um, well, I, I think culturally we probably live every day around a three or four just in commercials and just in you know uh, and just just in the just in things that we become desensitized to and so if i'm living at a three or four and a five or a six really doesn't bother me anymore then when i get to a nine uh, my goal in dealing with somebody who's at a nine is not to say uh come back to a five or six my goal with them is to say, I want you to recognize not just that this is an issue, but that even those things that are down here in the areas that we're not even bothered by are issues. Not so that the person becomes, you know, just afraid of looking around, but so that the person becomes aware of their need for Christ to cleanse their minds not just of the website where I'm watching pornographic sex, but also of my lack of sensitivity to those everyday examples of pornography that are around me, because to the degree that I go on accepting them and am no longer bothered by them, to that degree, I'm setting myself up so that the leap from that five to that nine is a very short leap. And it's not just so that I won't leap over into the worst of pornography, but it's so that I can understand the dignity inherent in human beings made in the image of God and how my embrace of a pornographic understanding of my fellow man, my fellow woman, is the embrace of the destruction of their dignity. So that if I see a young woman who is presenting herself in a pornographic way, and that's not bothering me, I've just said something about the dignity of that woman as made in the image of Christ. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, Therefore, treat the parts of your earthly body as dead to sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. And in them you also once walked when you were living in them. But now you also rid yourselves of all of them, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene spirit speech from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you stripped off the old self with evil practices and have put on the new self. Instead of following our fleshy desires, we need to put on Christ. We need to do away with the evil passions of this world. We have been given a new identity in Christ. We are united with Christ and the Apostle Paul tells us if indeed we have been crucified with Christ and raised with Christ, then we ought to put off the old man. The Bible also tells us in Romans 13 verse 14, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Why are you still gratifying the desires of the flesh? Why are you living as if you never knew Christ? The Bible tells us over and over again to put off the old man and put on Christ. And today if you're lost, trapped, and enslaved to sexual lust, hopeless, defeated, broken, and addicted to pornography, I want you to know that there is hope for you in Jesus Christ. Because Christ has done it all for us in the gospel. Christ has lived the life we should have lived and died the death we should have died. The exchange took place 
by his death on the cross, we just now have to believe that God in Christ has made the great exchange on our behalf. That is the reason why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him, that is Christ, who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. All you need to do is repent of your sin and run to Christ. Leave pornography behind. Leave this world behind. Leave the evil passions and futile pleasures of the culture behind and run to Christ and put your faith in him and him alone. In him, you will find newness of life and deliverance from your sin. And at this moment, I'd like to kindly extend an invitation to you to subscribe to the channel if you love and appreciate our content and help us share the videos and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if this is your first time on the channel and you made it this far in the video, well, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in our next video with Loving Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ.